23. It's cr- cra- yeah, right? What happened to December? It's crazy how quick it got here. Well, I thought as we kicked off 2023, we'd have a little fun to start off this morning and, and play a little word association game. I want to see how much you guys know about the culture that you live in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you a phrase, and I want you to yell out if you think you know the association. Maybe it's a company. I'll give you a little hint. All right? Just do it. Nike, Nike, yes. What about breakfast of champions? Wheaties. Wheaties, good. Okay. The best a man can get. Gillette, there you go, Gillette. (laughs) There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Good, okay. Okay, these these next two are going to be a little bit harder, so we'll see how good you are. Think different. Think different. different. Close. Apple. Apple. Think different is Apple. This is the hardest one, I think. Bet you can't eat just one. Lay's. Lay's. There you go. Lay's. There you go. All right. I'm loving it. McDonald's. All the kids know McDonald's. There we go. Like a good neighbor. All right. What's in your wallet? Capital One. One. There we go. Capital One. The quicker picker upper. Bounty. All right. These last two should be really easy. The happiest place on earth. Disney. And eat more chicken. Yeah, there we go. See, you guys, so all the companies that have spent millions of dollars to train you, it's working. You have associated a phrase with something. They, they, they literally, these companies will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to come up with these phrases to help you associate something with who they are. It's important for a company because they want you to understand, even in a simple phrase, what they're about. Chick-fil-A, eat more chicken. They don't serve beef. They want you to understand that. The happiest place on earth. Disney wants you to think once you walk through or you watch anything of theirs that it will be the happiest you will ever be. The church is the same. We don't spend millions of dollars on catchphrases, but we have a mission. We have a goal. We're not just randomly here with no purpose in mind. Our purpose is very clear. It's Jesus. At First Baptist Crane, we have a mission, and that mission is Jesus. Now, I want you to try to remember these three words as we dive into this today. And we talk about the mission and the rhythms of First Baptist Church for 2023. Love, grow, impact. Can you all say those? Love, grow, impact. If you can remember those three things, then that will help us the rest of the morning as we dive into it. Because we have a mission about Jesus, and we have actions that we are needed to do to love Jesus. Love is an action. Love is a verb. It's not something that's just a statement, but love requires movement. Growing requires movement. Making an impact requires movement. Our full mission is First Baptist Church exists to create disciples of Jesus, who love God radically, grow spiritually together, and impact the world. 
Now, the first part of that is the key, that we exist to create disciples of Jesus. Everything else flows out of that. What did that look like in 2022 here at First Baptist Church? We had, in 2022, we had 13 people be baptized this year. That's awesome. That is, yeah, that is something to clap about. 13 people baptized this year. We had 21 people say, I want to get on board and become a member here at First Baptist Church because I believe in that mission. That's exciting stuff. I anticipate in 2023 we will continue that. We want to see more people come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We want to see more people baptize and commit their lives to following Jesus. We want to see more people become on mission with us and join the church and say, hey, I want to do those things. That's our hope for 23. And so as we look at this mission, I want to break it down for us this morning and talk about, as we go into 2023, what does that look like practically? And then there are five rhythms of us as Christians in order to make that happen. So we talk about that the church exists to raise up disciples of Jesus who love God radically. 99% of the churches in America, they will have somewhere in their mission the phrase, or something like it, of loving God, right? That's, that's kind of a common one, right? But the idea of loving God radically is what's different. But what does that mean? What does it mean to love God radically? We live in a world that a lot of people don't love God. Or they say they love God, but you would look at their lives and you'd go, Really? Right? We look around it and we see people all the time. You're like, yeah, I love God. I love God. And it doesn't mean anything. And so what does it mean to love God radically? The first thing that I want to talk to you about this morning is that in order to love God radically, we, we teach the Bible as God's true word. Like that is something that is central to this church. And it's always been that way from the very foundations of almost 100 years ago is that the God's word, the Bible, is central and we actually believe it. It's not just another book in history. It's not just a textbook to read to get some good ideas about how we should live. But we actually believe it is God's word. That when he says something, he means it. It's not just, well, that was good for them back in the first century, or that was good for them back thousands of years ago. But we actually believe that it applies to us today. And so that's why it's so important for us in Rooted Kids Ministry, our, our fifth grade and under, that we are using the Gospel Project curriculum. Because the Gospel Project curriculum has as a goal for our kids to have learned the whole Bible, from Genesis through Revelations. It's a three-year program that they want to learn every book of the Bible. What is it about? What are the major characters? What are the themes? And most importantly, how does every book of the Bible point us to Jesus? Jesus is the center of everything. And the only way you get there is if you actually believe that when you open this book, that it's actually important. This book we talked about how Jesus is fully God and fully man. This book is the same. It is fully divine and fully human. It was written by authors that were human. And they had their own personalities and their own uh, opinions. But it was divine because the Holy Spirit worked in every single one of those authors. From Moses who wrote the book of Genesis all the way to the end of the Bible. There's not a single word in here in the original manuscripts that's incorrect. It's perfect. And we believe that, and it's important for our kids to understand that. It's also important for our students in 6th through 12th grade in our refuge student ministry to study that as well. This year, they spent a significant amount of time in the fall going through the book of James. And as James, Jesus' brother, talked about, how do I live out this life? How do I live out the faith that I have in practical ways that changes things? 
That's so important for our teenagers, isn't it? To learn not just up here, but to learn how to live it out. And it was because of that that they did things like they went to the nursing home here in Crane to go be with our seniors that are in the nursing home. They may not have people that come and visit them very often, but they did. And it wasn't just a one-time thing. They came and they went a couple times because they wanted to learn how to use their faith, how to live it out, not just to sit and take it in, but how do I live it out? Because we believe that it's God's true word. It's not just something we take in, but it's something that causes us to move. As adults, in our adult stuff, whether it's Sunday morning, Sunday school class, whether it is in here, whether it is in our women's groups on Sunday evening or Wednesday evening, we've been studying books of the Bible. Just in here alone this last year, I was, I was thinking back, we did the whole book of Galatians. We did the 12 minor prophets, so we did 12 books this summer. We did Philemon. We did the first three chapters of Luke. On Wednesday nights in here, in our small groups, we did uh, Acts, we did Genesis, and we did Judges. So we covered several books of the Bible this fall because it's so important for us to learn. In the Sunday school class, they covered other books of the Bible as well. They covered Mark and some other ones. We really believe that in order to love God radically, you have to be in his word. And you have to read it for it to change your life. Also, part of loving God radically is creating gathering spaces that are focused on Jesus. It's not just gathering places to come and hang out, although community is important, but what is the purpose of our community? So whether it's our Sunday morning activities, whether it's our Wednesday night activities, whether it is uh, anything that we do through this, whether it's an outreach into the community, it's about Jesus. That's the purpose of it. That's why we do the studies we do. That's why we have the conversations we have is because we want people to point to Jesus. We want people to think about Jesus. Jesus is the one that changes everything. Not our good ideas. Not our, oh, well, this is a great thing to have. We should do this. It's about Jesus. How does Jesus play into everything that we do? Every time we gather How is he a part of that? One of the things that I have a a goal for in 23 that will point people to Jesus is we want to start a Spanish ministry here. We live in a town that 80% are Hispanic. And that is amazing. And we have to realize the importance of reaching out to people in their language. And so what I want to encourage you is when you look around the room, when you look around our town, we see Hispanic, we see black, we see Asian, we see people from all different ethnic backgrounds. Every single one of these people are made in the image of God. Every single one of us is loved by God and needs to hear his word. And so in 23, I want us to be proactive in reaching the people that may not feel comfortable coming because they can't feel comfortable with English. And that's okay. That's okay. We want to create a space for that. And so what I want to do is I want to encourage, I want to challenge if you speak Spanish to come and see me. I've got a pastor in Odessa who's Hispanic, and he's done many Spanish ministries, and he's going to come, and he's going to work with us to help us create a great Spanish ministry here at the church. In this building, that they are part of our family, and we are worshiping God together, but they get to feel comfortable because it's in their language, in their tongue, and we'll have Spanish Bibles, we'll have Spanish Bible study, but we will make it 
where we can minister to every person in this community because that's what Jesus would want. And so if you have that ability, if God has gifted you in that, I want to encourage you to come be part of it. Come see me. We're going to make this really a great ministry um, because we need to love everyone in this community. First Baptist Church needs to be known as a place where any person can come and learn about Jesus. The third part about loving God radically is seeking God's wisdom through prayer. Over the summer, on Wednesday nights, we spent the whole summer in prayer. We had a group of people that would meet up here on Wednesday nights, every Wednesday night throughout the whole summer, and we would just pray. We would pray for our community. We would pray for our families. We would pray for our teachers. We would pray for our, our uh, volunteer workers. We would pray for our police. We would pray for our firefighters. We would pray for our city officials. We would pray for our government officials. We would pray for your marriages. We would pray for your children. But in 23, I want us to make prayer even more of a priority. It's great that we take a summer and we spend every Wednesday night praying, but I want it to be part of everything that we do. In our women's discipleship groups that meet on Sundays and Wednesdays, I want it to be at the forefront. In the men's ministry we're about to start, it's going to be at the forefront. Everything that we do, we want to call out to God. If we're not a praying church, we're not going to have anything. And so we're going to make this a focal point of 2023 is that we're going to pray and ask God to move. And then we're going to expect him to do it. We're not just going to hope and wish, but we're going to pray in a way that we expect God to move. There are so many people in this community that need Jesus. Who's going to go? It's got to be us. And that begins by having a heart for people. It begins by, before we go out, that we pray for people. You may disagree. You may not like their politics. You may not like their habits. But man, I see them as the way God sees them. God's image in every single person you come across and that's how we want to be. And that starts with prayer. It's amazing. If you don't like somebody or you have a disagreement with somebody or you have an argument going on with somebody, if you will just take time to pray for them, God will do something in your heart. He will change it. The second thing is grow spiritually together. So we talk about love, grow, impact. The grow is grow spiritually together. And the first thing that we want to focus on is partnering with parents to help their children love Jesus and want to engage the world with the gospel. So as, as parents, it's hard, right? It's hard. Kids are a challenge. They're God's way of sanctifying us, right? <laughs> they are God's way of helping us see our blind spots and helping us to rely on him. And, and I understand that. And that's why we want to be able to partner with you. The church is not raising your kids. If you think coming on Sunday morning for an hour and going on Wednesday nights for an hour is what's going to work, you're wrong. Your kids need to be learning about Jesus. They need to be studying his word every day. And that's tough. Right? We've got a million things to do. We've got jobs, we've got responsibilities, we've got activities, but we want to partner with you to help you. We have tons of resources. We have books that you can have. You can get audio books. If you're not a big reader, we can do that. We have tons of website resources. On our church website, fbccrane.com, there is a resource tab. And when you click on that resource tab... There are resources. There are book resources. There are audio resources. There are video resources. We want to give that to you and help you with that. But also, if you just need somebody to talk to, if you're just up to here 
and you're like, I just need somebody to talk to, to bounce ideas off, to just vent to because I'm struggling, we're here. We're here. Our Rooted Kids Ministry volunteers would love to help you. I would love to help you. We also have Right Now Media. If you don't have access to that yet, come see me. I will give you a free subscription. There is a ton of stuff on Right Now Media that will help your kids. If you've never used it, I encourage you to use it. From babies all the way through high schoolers, there is tons of resources available in a video format that will help them. The second thing is we want to disciple everyone so that they can grow, serve, and play where God planted them. Did you realize that you're here in Crane, Texas for a reason? I know a lot of people think that I'm here or I'm there and it's random, but it's not. God has placed you where you are for a specific reason. It may be for a short season of time. It may be for a long season of time. But the reason you're there is because God put you there for a purpose. And we want to help you be able to grow so that you can learn how to be effective for the kingdom where God's planted you. In your neighborhood, at your jobs, in the relationships you have with your kids, whether it be sports or FFA or band, whatever it is. You're there for a reason. And we want to help you. From kids through adults, we want to help you be able to grow together. It's not something that you need to do alone. So many people think I'm on an island and I have no one I can talk to. That's what the church is for. It's for doing life together. We also have um, ministries like Table for Six. Many of you were able to participate in the fall, and I heard amazing stories from a lot of you about how much you got out of that. Table for six <coughs> is simply six people that commit for three months to meet one time during each of those months. So for this year, it's February, March, and April. One time to eat and get to know people. It's a very easy, very non-pressure way to grow spiritually together, to get to know somebody's story, to hear how God has worked in their lives. We have signups in the coffee area for this spring. I want to encourage you to do it. I want to encourage you to sign up so that you can get to know some people. And when you sign up, to actually follow through and to actually meet, make it a priority one time a month to get to know people and share your stories and hear how God has moved in somebody's life. That's one way. We also want to offer this coming year small groups. These are more intense. These would be groups that meet in homes during the weeks for fellowship, prayer, Bible study, but they would meet on a more regular basis. And for a lot of people, this is crucial to their lives. I've been in so many churches and with so many people over the years that said this was the single thing that saved them in their marriage, saved them in their faith, was being able to have a group of people that they were committed to and they met regularly and they dug in together. They dug into the scriptures together. They dug into life together. And so we're going to offer that for people who want that. And I encourage you to be praying about it. I know life's busy. I know you got something every night of the week, but this stuff's important. It's really important. Also, we have men's and women's discipleship groups. We have women's on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights, and we're going to have our men's on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. These groups are so important to being able to grow together. And so we have lots of options, and I want to encourage you to, to invest to give your life to being involved in this stuff and making it a priority, it will definitely help. Third, in the grow spiritually together, we want to leverage technology for community and spiritual growth. 
Now, technology is a tricky thing, right? Some people think technology is the thing. But technology is not meant to be the thing. It's meant to be a tool to help. We are soon going to be able to video, video Sunday mornings. So that if you're ever out, if you're sick, if you're traveling, you'll be able to watch. The plan is not to live stream. And the reason I don't want us to live stream is I don't want people to be comfortable sitting at home. We learned over the last two years of the pandemic that it becomes very easy to just sit at home. You can sleep in, stay in your pajamas, have your cup of coffee, and sit on your couch. But it's not church. This is church. It's shoulder to shoulder with people. And so we want to provide that technology to be able to help you if you miss, but we don't want to replace presence. We also have right now media as a resource. We have our website as a resource. One of the things in 2023 that I want us to start doing that is technologically driven is I want us to start telling stories. God has moved in each and every one of your lives. And you may sit there and you may go, my story is nothing special. My story is nothing great. It is. It is. Every single life that has been changed by Jesus is special. Every single story is special. Some of you have had radical life changes because of Jesus. Some of you have seen your marriages restored because of Jesus. Some of you have seen kids that were off the rails because of Jesus come back. Some of you are like, my life's been pretty simple. Jesus has been faithful from the get-go. That's a story. And so in 23, I want us to start telling our stories. And so we're going to set up a way to start videoing them. You're not going to have to come up here and talk live, but we want to set up a time where you can come and we'll video you telling your story about Jesus. Because I really believe that when you hear someone else's story, it will change your life. When we tell people our stories of how Jesus has changed our lives, it affects us. It causes us to pause and go, you know what? I'm not alone. You know what? I just thought I could live in silence because I was struggling with depression or I'm struggling with my belief. And then you watch a video and you say, okay, I'm not alone. There's somebody else. And I, and I thought they had it all together, but they don't. They're grieving. They're hurting. They're frustrated. But, but I'm not alone. And that can be a change for everyone. Lastly, uh, Facebook. Facebook, social media has its pros and cons. But what we're trying to do with our Facebook page is leverage it to help people grow. Yes, we put events on there so that people know what's going on in the church. But we also try to post uh, sayings. We also try to post articles. And I want to encourage you to take the time to read them. If there's an article posted, take the time, two minutes, to read it. I'm going to start this year. We're going to put more content on Facebook um, because we want to leverage it as a way to teach and to show you how good God is. And so I want to encourage you, if you don't follow us on Facebook, to do it so that you can be up to date and so that you can know what God's got going on in there. Thirdly, impact the world. We exist to impact the world. And the first thing, the first way we do that is to live out a culture of authenticity and confession. So many times we want to live and look, and social media is really good at this, making it look like everything's perfect. We come on Sunday morning and we know how to dress, we know how to talk, we know how to act. But then Monday through Saturday, our lives look totally different. And we want to be a safe place 
for you to be able to come and say, you know what, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I'm hurting, I'm struggling, and I need somebody just to listen, somebody just to cry with, somebody just to give me a hug. That's what the church is. The church is that space. It's also a place where we can not have to put on this mask, where on Sunday we have to make everything look perfect when the rest of the week it's not. And when you do that, when we do that, when we have a culture of that, people will take notice. People in this town will take notice that the people that go to First Baptist, they act different. They don't act like everything's okay because they know it's not. They don't act one way on Sunday and act another way the rest of the week. They're consistent because their faith and their hope is in Jesus. They don't have to put on a show. They can be who God has called them to be. The next thing is if we're going to impact the world, we're going to work with local groups here in our community to make the community thrive. We do four days for other every summer, and we partner with the Methodist Church, the Catholic Church to do that. But I would love for us to take that and make it more regular. Why do we have to take just four days out of the year to help the community? Why can't we? There are so many people in this church that love working with their hands. What if we just decided when there's a need, we met it? Why do we need to wait for six months we can do that. Also, we've this year worked with the Methodist Church. They do a food pantry every month, but many of you were very generous in, in bringing presents to give out to kids for Christmas. Uh, I talked with Glenn. They also accept uh, new and gently used clothing as well. So that's something in 23 we want to help partner with them if there's some clothing needs uh, that we can help with for kids and adults that may not be as, as fortunate um, to be able to help with that. We've also talked with Glenn about potentially uh, starting a community garden here in Crane and potentially doing something like that, where we can help the people of Crane through providing a garden that uh, we can grow vegetables, we can do different flowers, we can do something to bring life to the community and make it a fun thing. Also, uh, the first quarter of this year, we're going to be partnering with First Baptist Odessa. And their missions and evangelism pastor is going to come over here. And on a Sunday evening, we're going to do evangelism training. And the idea behind that is I want every one of us to be able to share the gospel with someone in a very easy way. You're standing in the grocery store line and you're talking to somebody. How do you tell somebody the gospel? How do, you, how do you make that transition? How do you take that conversation? How do you go to your neighbor? How can we go door to door this year and ask people, can I pray for you? Can I share with you the gospel? How can we do that? So we're going to do a training up here, and I want to encourage every one of you to come so that you can learn how, in a non-threatening, easy way, to be able to tell people about Jesus. Because every single person that's a follower of Jesus should be telling somebody about Jesus. Jesus didn't come just to save you and to say, hey, stay in your place. But he saved you so that you could go and tell it. We sang over Christmas, go tell it on the mountain. And what about if we just went and, and told our neighbor? Start there. So we're going to do that. Lastly, third, we're going to share the hope of Jesus to the nations. We have Natalie Young that we are supporting as a church. She's overseas right now. We want to be able to continue to pray for her, financially support her. But I would love for us to have more missionaries. We talked earlier this year during our Mission Sunday about we are praying that maybe some of you, maybe some of these kids will one day go into the nations and share the gospel. And so we're also going to partner with First Baptist Church Odessa. 
and we're going to go on some mission trips this year. We're going to set up some stuff both in Texas, in the United States, and then also globally where we can partner with them to travel, to go share the hope of Jesus. And I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about us being a church that goes. Not just a church that stays, but a church that goes. Goes to our neighbors, goes to our schools, goes to our city, goes to our state, goes to our nation, and goes to the ends of the earth. And so how does that happen? It happens through five rhythms that we've talked about a lot over this last year. Five rhythms. The first rhythm is that we gather. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, the writer of Hebrews says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Over my life, I have had family members, I've had close friends who have believed, I know Jesus, I'm good. I may read my Bible, I may do a devotional. I don't need the church. I don't need to go on Sunday. I don't need to go on Wednesday. I don't need to go whenever they meet. I'm good. Throughout the New Testament, it is almost synonymous. If you're a Christian, you're involved in the local church. You are involved. You're engaged. Christianity was never called to be a solo act where you just hunker down and live a life by yourself. We were called to live in community. And the reason we do that is not primarily for us. It's for others. We talked about earlier that we're made in the image of God. Every single one of us is made in the image of God, but yet we're all different. How can I learn from somebody different than me if I don't be with them? You can't. How can I bless someone if I'm not with them? If I'm not doing life with them? And I'm not talking about Sunday morning for one hour. I'm not talking about Wednesday night for one hour. I'm talking about life. You can't do it by yourself. You need people. People need you. The Bible is abundantly clear, the importance of gathering. The gathering of the saints to sing together, and it doesn't matter if you can't sing. No one cares. Sing. The ability to get together and to hear God's word together. The ability to see people need prayer. The ability to see people take communion. This is important. We don't just do it because it has no purpose. Everything has a purpose. And it's because God has said to do it to glorify Jesus. And so I want to encourage you in 23 to make gathering a rhythm of your life. That doesn't mean I expect you to be here 52 Sundays out of the year. But is it a priority? Is it something that you look forward to? I love when I hear Jack Potter is telling his dad, I can't wait to come to church. I love that. That is exciting when kids want to come to church. It's exciting when you want to come to church. Second, pray. Ephesians 6, 18 through 20. Pray at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplications for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. We talked about this a little bit. But prayer is so foundational. It is so important for you personally, but it's also so important for us as a group. 
That's why we have prayer so much throughout our service. Why I pray earlier. We'll pray again here in just a minute. But it's also important during the week for you to spend time in prayer. But praying with purpose. I want to encourage you to pray with purpose. I want to ask you to pray for me. As Paul is asking here of the Ephesians, pray for me. Pray for my family. Pray for those that sit around you. Pray for their families. Pray for our schools. Pray for our civil servants. Pray for our leaders. Pray. But don't just pray as if it's something that you just have to check off the list. But pray as if God's going to move because you prayed. Pray as though if I don't pray, God's not going to do something. Pray with that type of urgency because that's what the prayers that God wants us to pray. He wants us to come to him. He wants us to cry out to him. He wants us to need him. And that is what prayer is about. God wants us to pray because it changes us. Like I said earlier, if you've got a problem with somebody, if you've got a, a disagreement with somebody, the first thing you need to do is to pray. Pray for them. Pray that, that God would move in their lives. Pray that God would move in your life. When you have a struggle with your spouse, when you have a struggle with your children, when you have a struggle with your coworker, with your neighbor, stop. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for our church. Pray that God would use us to make a difference in this community. Pray that God would use us to make a difference in this world. Pray that God would help us to live and to love and to grow and to impact. Pray those things expecting God to move. Third, give. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 7. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Everyone hates talking about this. I get it. But it's in the Bible. So guess what? We talk about it. Every one of us has been given differently. But every one of us has been given equally. Let me say that again. Every one of us has been given differently, but every one of us has been given equally. We all have different income levels. We all have been blessed financially differently. But each and every one of us has equally been blessed through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. There was no, well, Jesus died and he gave 10% to this person and 90% to this person. Jesus gave 100% to every person. Every drop of blood was 100% for every single person. And so what God has asked us to do is out of gratitude to give back. And that giving back is to his bride, the church. In order to be able to do the things we do. To be able to have rooted kids ministry. To be able to have refuge student ministry. To be able to go on mission trips. To be able to help with uh, the food pantries. To be able to help with the needs of our community. To be able to keep the lights on in the building. God has asked us to give. To give generously. Not out of the leftover and go, okay, I have this, 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 this. Okay, I've got this much left. But to go, okay, I need to give to God. And then I will reprioritize and reorganize my living, my life, based on that. Fourth, serve. 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11. As each has received a gift... Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks is one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves is one who serves by the strength that God supplies. In order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. If you're a Christian, part of the, the, the benefits 
is that God has given you a spiritual gift. And everyone has one. You have to figure out what it is, and we can help you with that if you don't know. We'd love to help you out with that. But God has called each one of us to find a place in his church to serve. And we have needs. We need help in rooted kids, both on Sundays and Wednesdays. In refuge student ministry, we need help. We need help with greeting. We need help with IT. We need help with Spanish ministry that we want to start this year. There is a lot of things. If there's something that you're passionate about and you're like, I feel like God's called me to this and we don't do it, come see me. I'd love to talk with you about how can we listen to God and be that. But every single person in his church should find a place. Find a place where you can serve, where you can bless other people, where you can be part of what God is doing here. Finally, five, invite. In Mark 16, 15, and Jesus said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Invite. Go tell people about Jesus. Go to your neighbors. Go to your coworkers. Go to your classmates. Go to your teachers. Go to the Middle East, as Natalie is doing. Go. Invite people into the life that Jesus gives. Because there's no better thing to go. All those companies, they have their slogans, they have their mission statements because they want you to come sell and buy from them something. The mission of the church is not to sell anybody anything, but to give. To simply give the good news of Jesus and invite them to come participate in the blessing of it. And all of that starts, all of this starts with the belief in Jesus Christ. The belief that I'm a sinner, I have a problem that I can't fix on my own. It is the conviction that I need a solution and that solution is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the only one that can save me because he came and lived the life that I couldn't live. He lived a perfect sinless life. He died on a cross for my sins. And that three days later, God rose him from the dead in order to save me. And Jesus loves me so much that he willingly laid down his life for me. And all I have to do is accept it. Just accept it. And so this morning, if you haven't done that, I want to encourage you to do that. If you have done that, I want to challenge you to live out our mission of raising up disciples of Jesus so that we can love, that we can grow, and we can impact together. That we can make a priority in 23 to gather, to pray, to serve, to give, and invite. And I think if we all can agree to make this a priority, that God's going to do some amazing things here in First Baptist Crane. And I think he'll do amazing things in your families and in your relationships. And I want to encourage you to challenge him on it. Challenge him. Say, God, I want to see you move in my life. And I know he will because he loves you. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for calling us, for choosing us for putting your seal on us and calling us your own. And in response to that, Lord, we thank you for the challenge that you've given us to go and to love you radically, to grow together, to not want to live life in isolation, but to actually grow together. And out of that growth, not just head knowledge, but to live it out, to impact our neighborhoods, impact our schools, impact our community, impact our world. 
with the hope of Jesus. And so this morning, as we continue our time of worship and singing, Lord, I pray that if someone needs prayer this morning, that they, they won't be ashamed, that they would live an authentic life. <laughs> and, and, and it's okay to be not okay. And that they would come and, and receive prayer. If they're a follower of Jesus and they want to go spend time and take communion and just thank you for, for who you are and what you've done, that they would do that. Lord, we give you this time, we give you this morning, we give you this year. Do amazing things in each and every one of us. It's in your son's precious name we pray. Amen.